Salute, ombri del futuro. Antonio Salieri a vostro servizio. I can almost see you in your ranks, waiting for your turn to live. Ghosts of the future be visible, I beg you. Be visible. Come to this dusty old room, this time. The smallest hours of dark November, 1823. And be my confessors. Will you not enter this place and stay with me? Till dawn, just, just till dawn. Smeary six o'clock. This is the last hour of my life. Those about to die implore you. There. It worked. I can see you. Oh, scusati. Invocation is an exhausting business. I need refreshment. Actually, the first sin I have to confess to you is gluttony. Sticky gluttony at that. Infantile Italian gluttony. The truth is that my entire life I have never been able to conquer a lust for the sweet meats of northern Italy, where I was born. From ages 3 to 73, my entire career has been conducted to the taste of almonds sprinkled with sifted sugar, Veronese biscuits, Milanese macaroons. <laughs> Don't judge me too harshly for this. All men harbour patriotic feelings of some kind. My parents were provincial subjects of the Austrian Empire. Although devout Catholics, their notion of God was really a superior Habsburg emperor who inhabited a heaven only slightly further off than Vienna. All they required of him was to protect commerce and keep them forever preserved in mediocrity. My own desires were very different. I wanted to fame, not to deceive you. I wanted to blaze like a comet across the firmament of Europe. Yet only in one especial way. Music. Absolute music. A note of music is either right or wrong. Absolutely not even time can alter that. Music is God's art. Already when I was ten, a spray of sounded notes would make me dizzy almost to falling. By twelve, I was stumbling across the fields of Lombardy, humming my arias and anthems to the Lord. My one desire was to join all the Italian composers who had celebrated his glory through the long Italian past. Every Sunday I saw him in church. Painted on the flaking wall, I don't mean Christ, 
The Christs of Lombardy were simpering sillies with lambkins in their arms. No, I mean an old candle-smoked god in a mulberry robe. Staring at the world with dealers' eyes, tradesmen had put him up there. Those eyes made bargains, real and irreversible. You give me so, I'll give you so, no more, no less. The night I left at Nago forever, I went to see him and made a bargain with him myself. I was a sober sixteen, filled with a desperate sense of right. I knelt before the god of bargains and prayed to him through the mouldering plaster with all my soul. Signore, let me be a composer. Grant me sufficient fame to enjoy it. In return, I will live with virtue. I, I will strive to better the lot of my fellows, and I will honour you with much music all the days of my life. As I said amen, I saw his eyes flare. Bene, go forth, Antonio. Serve me and mankind, and you will be blessed. The very next day, a family friend appeared out of the blue, took me off to Vienna and paid for me to study music. Shortly afterwards, I met the emperor who favoured me. Clearly, my bargain had been accepted. The same year I left Lombardy, a young protégé was touring Europe. A miraculous virtuoso aged ten years. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And now, gracious ladies, obliging gentlemen, I present to you for one performance only my last composition entitled the death of Mozart, or did I do it? On this, the last night of my life. <laughs>